Now, there are growing calls for government to build proper houses for disadvantaged communities. Human Settlements Minister Mamuloko Kubai is hosting the director of the United Nations Human Settlement Program, Maimuna Maud, today. The visit is aimed at addressing the challenges of informal settlements and slums. Minister will lead a tour of informal settlements that were severely affected by floods in KwaZulu Natal in April. My colleague, that's Sina reported, Ian C. Dustin Tatia, following this story for us, is joining us now live. Dustin, a very good afternoon. What's the latest you can tell us about uh, these challenges of housing, informal settlements, and slums that are seemingly long being addressed by the minister with the United Nations? Well, let's start here, Braden. Uh, this piece of land that I'm standing on right now, just to contextualize what we are talking about. This is the plot in Reservoir Hills. You'll know it because we spent some time here just, uh, I think, a couple of weeks ago it was. This was the location where temporary housing units were meant to be put up for flood victims. But instead, uh, it, a decision was taken to put people up in temporary housing, accommod uh, temporary student accommodation. Uh, you'll remember that that was also a bit of a mix up because uh, that housing was not ready at the right time. And as a result of that, uh, those families, about 47 of them that were relocated, had to be moved. So now the decision has been taken to have permanent structures on this land. There is some work that's taking place. So this has now become the showpiece for the Etequini municipality, and uh, that's why its visitors, its high-level delegation uh, that had come to the city as part of that, that tour, was brought here because the intention is to use this land to put up three-story buildings to deal with not the flood victims, but also others that are living at informal settlements. You'll remember that those that were affected by the floods here were living close to a river not far from here. And as a result of that, although those families are expected to be housed here probably within the next two years, there are also other units that will be available for the remainder of the families that remain near. So that's one of the other things that's being looked at by the government delegation is not just dealing with the current situation, but how do they attend to the broader issue because it seems like disaster and storms have become a part of our reality here in South Africa. So it now needs to be a, a more proactive approach. So that's why we are here. Another part of the visit was also at that informal settlement that I'm talking about on the road. So uh, the, the whole visit has just wrapped up now and it, it means that they will a memorandum of understanding between Esekwini and... Yeah, Justin, our connection is not the greatest this hour, but I need to ask you this. One of the criticisms has been the time it has taken to do exactly what's happening now and the pace at which this development is likely to be uh, implemented uh, 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 by going forward because the people are currently in temporary accommodation. This is true, and it's one of the questions that I asked both the minister as well as the executive director for UN Habitat. And I'll just start with the executive director. I was cut off uh, as I asked that question by her special advisor. Uh, I was told that that question is too political if we had to look at or, or if I asked her to give an assessment of South African government's response to the disaster, and I couldn't even get to finish that question. I was told it's too political. But the minister was also asked a similar question by me. I said to her, but why are we now talking about renting accommodation when it seemed like the logical solution from the start, rather than building temporary houses here, then demolishing them and building permanent structures? And she says, if I had to really simplify her answer, that this is a learning process. This is not something that we deal with all the time as a country. In fact, it's uh, now going to be part of how they deal with this. So she made an example saying that they keep adjusting their strategy. Earlier this year, they, they, there were some incidents in Peter Marisburg, and there they handed out vouchers. So now they're realizing, look, this is also an opportunity. But even this took that long because they had to have it signed off by the Minister of Finance. It wasn't a standard response. So there's a lot of red tape that you need to get through to get to this point. And as you rightfully said, I mean, it's been more than six months and we still have people sitting in temporary accommodation and they will be there for the foreseeable future because these units that I'm talking about should take at least two years to be built. Thank you very much, Tassin Tatia, for that update there on the ground in one of the areas there of Reservoir Hills in Durban, where new homes, new houses are going to be built for some of the people who have been affected very badly by the April floods in KwaZulu-Natal. Only now that work 
is beginning. Meanwhile, they find themselves in temporary accommodation.